screwed up on the rhythm a couple times. <laughs> Damn it. That was a rocking intro, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, thank you so much for coming back. Right on. Thanks for having me, man. Been a little, so glad to be back. Been a little while. Hey, you know what I want to I wanna hear? Um, you were playing the Mickey Mouse theme earlier when you were tuning up. Yeah. Yeah, I've just been doing a bunch of uh, Disney stuff. I don't know. All kinds so of things. good. The impossible. Kid, kid songs and, and theme songs, but yeah. What's that impossible version? I always have to remember, like, how does this one go again? <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, like, oh, it's an intro. I'm like, no, that's just me figuring out how, the, how fast is this one going again? No. Sounds like a workout. Just like, <laughs> I mean, it's like almost like Benny Chong style. <laughs> but then like, little, the little smoothness is that's what I love about it. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, just I don't know that all. It, it, it was you know Benny and and Byron they do a, a a medley of like five or six Disney tunes, and um, that was just my I guess version of, of I can I can do two. They can they can do seven or whatever it is <laughs> absurd that they do. It was yeah. <laughs> but anyways, that was but, that was incredible. Yeah, it's, it's fun, you know. And, and you're taking like a whole orchestral composition, trying to yeah, trying to do the the drum thing right. The the because the Mickey Mouse march starts with so it actually does work to do a um, intro with strumming. So if I find it to be a good warm up tune to also the um, and then what's interesting is running this line but then you have this drone and these strings are muted so mm. so you actually still get the percussive yeah. uh, So that layer is still there. It's not just muted. What are some other... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's almost... Uh, there's like a campanella -like style to a yeah, lot of then, it, too. No. Just kind of work to have... Sometimes it gets a little muddy in there, but I feel like it doesn't matter. Almost yeah. like if there's so much of like da 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 happening, if I don't go like da 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 da, no, who's gonna be? Like, hey, stop! I didn't hear the message. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you didn't play M I C. <laughs> right. It was just partially M I. Yeah, and then I don't know what you did. You funked up that rhythm. <laughs> 
And, uh, yeah. But it works. It carries. It carries, right? Because you just know it, and so it's it's a sing along in your head, and and yeah. yeah. So it works. You pull harmonics out where I'm like, how did you? What? <laughs> it's like you just hear it, but you can't tell. Yeah. Where it's like, coming from. It's like. Wait, did I miss that? <laughs> I don't know where they came from. Yeah. So yeah. Um, like there was a point where you up strummed and I heard a harmonic. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> so, I have no idea. How long have you had this UT5K? What a beauty. Oh yeah, man. I've had it for... Has it been almost a few, mo- few months? I mean, gosh, four, four or five months? Was it just only this year? Yeah, I think it was last December. I think it was last year. Was it end of last year? You got it. Yeah. yeah. Time wow. flies when you're having fun. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, it's it's funny because um I mean, it's not funny funny haha, but I mean, over time, you know, you you develop a um relationship with an instrument, right? It mm-hmm. it um, you know, because I mean, I I tend to think that I can hop around on any instrument and be okay, okay right? But you definitely settle in on your go-to, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And what I find is is this ukulele gives me a lot of what I need as far as being able to get from to and fro without much effort. And and when I need it to sing, when I need to fret there, when I need it to play in tune it's reliable um much more so than you know other instruments that that i'll be able to yeah that i've played there's like this beautiful glow to the sound too well and it's it what's great about it is also it's it's a little um clearer right more um poignant um than other instruments but i find that that works very well especially for contrapuntal type writing like playing with like really hearing that minor second and um, having two clear points so that they like they really rub um, the right way and like that's that's really nice versus it all muddying together yeah if it's too muddy like a like a like a jazz guitar tone or something you know what I mean like yeah um, it's it's very it's pleasant it's nice but at the same time when you're playing music with a lot of intricacy like it requires more high end you need more brightness you need more clarity in the attack that um you know it but that also lends itself to that then that you know that this starts getting deep because like you know i arranged this once i had this in my hand you know wow. like this is the kind of instrument that like inspires that kind of arrangement i'd really think that like musicians like guitar like whether it's guitar, ukulele, bass, whatever it is, like your influence, not only, like you don't only you, the, your your instrument plays you, like you, you, it tells you what it wants yeah. to. You know, we think that we're telling it like, oh no, but like, hey, I bought a classical guitar. Guess what? I, anyways, so it's like who's which one is, because it works well, right? When I use classical guitar technique on my classical guitar, it's like it, it goes like, yeah, man, that's what I want to hear. That's what I like, and this is a definitely a, a it's made for performance you can tell that it's a very um like you know high high level instruments or, or instruments that that um it, it it it's not until you're i mean you can play you know simple chords and things and appreciate great tone but when you start playing more um dense arrangements with um, a lot going on that demands a lot out of the instrument that's when you really notice um, what instruments are capable of um, and that can affect if you're a composer or an arranger that can affect your musical choices based on the instrument that you're playing mm, totally that makes a lot of sense <clears throat> and um, yeah it makes me feel good about what we do because um, it's like trying to help people find that yeah, the perfect instrument that thing. Them. And sometimes it's like a handful of instruments because different ones serve dif- different purposes. Mm-hmm. But oh, totally! The fact that like you know getting this instrument and then like it in- 
part inspiring like a composition like that because of what you're hearing oh totally right yeah. that's like, a oh just listen thing. To... i can just do that all i just want <laughs> it's all G. <laughs> G is for good. Is there um, classical? I mean, you're a classical guitarist. You learn from some of the best classical guitarists out there, but um, probably your ukulele wasn't necessarily like, I don't know, maybe taught. Maybe it was, but. Do you carry over classical guitar techniques? Definitely, yeah. Uh, and that's that's largely due to Byron Yasui. Like he, um, you know, really. It's not so much that that. You know, I I think that that what he always he he's a huge fan of a, a, a late great ukulele player John King, that was um, you know celebrated as as really a one of the pioneers of what we call classical ukulele, right? Playing um, Bach and Chopin and doing transcriptions that are, you know, from the score and really um, informed interpretations that are um, of the period and things like that. Like, it's, it gets very heady in a way, but but it's very, like, like I, 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 I think that, <clears throat> you know, naturally having gone through the, the classical guitar school and, and master's program and things like that like my inclinations and, and training tell me to do certain things but but um you know byron i think really um it's it's somehow like i always come back to it you know i, I come back to it in a way almost like a reverency to the to the way that he approaches the instrument you know because and, and like in a way, Benny is so carefree about it, right? And like he just does it, and and like it's just um, he breathes ukulele and, and music, and it just comes out. And he's like, I have no idea. My thumb just ended up on the other side because I wanted to hear that sound, and <laughs> that's amazing, right? And Byron is is this amazing um, guru with with um, uh, such an immense resource of experience and knowledge that that anyone that you just have to bow down because it's and and I try to go back to this you know in my playing and and often I'll I'll sit as I practice and think like what would they say about this passage or this arrangement like you know um you know what would Byron say about this and oh that was okay I'm because different teachers and different players always have a different way of hearing things and a different way that they want it to go, right? And so you're never really going to be able to make everyone happy. But what we can do is take something and make it our own. And and to be able to... to I think that's a way of doing it, you know. Um, is, is still um, giving reverence to, to our teachers by... Um, being deliberate with our choices. Um, and, it's like they're and criticizing you in your head. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, it, and and like acknowledging, even if it's just to myself at that moment, that that's where that choice came from and that I'm thankful for that, you know, because if it wasn't for them telling me that I wouldn't have been able to make that decision at that crossroad, mm -hmm. even if it's as mundane seeming as do I use third finger or fourth finger when I make that slide to transition to the new chord. Like, I mean, like it seems very specific, but at the same time, like, you know, I think, yeah. So, yes, was the answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of like, um, like you you pull such beautiful tone out of instruments, and I mean, a lot of that, not all, but a lot of that, you can attribute to the right hand. So, talk talk <laughs> more about like how you um, what what grit sandpaper you use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is um five hundred. Let's see if I can even catch enough of that here but it's a uh, 500 wet dry um, sandpaper that I order off of <clears throat> um, I think uh, guitar salon or <clears throat> strings by mail I think yeah, anyways, one of those sites and um, basically it's um, has this white powdery stuff on it that I use and I tend to 
I used to, I, I'll use a file sometimes, but actually I, I generally always go back to just using small pieces of paper that I rip off and then sort of massaging the nail because I feel like I can get the mo I, f I can really feel what's happening in on the nail. And you know, these strings that are, basically what's happening is I'm trying to create a smooth surface that the string can slide off of, right? Um, but part of the reason for using the flesh, I think, is what happens is, if you can imagine the nail is like this thick, right? If you were to file it, you end up with a corner on this edge and on this top edge. Does that make sense? And so by using the sandpaper and the flesh of my finger to massage that nail, it automatically kind of sculpts that corner smoother and rounder on either side. So, so you know, we think of our, our nail as sort of this, but we have to imagine that it's really thick and there's this whole other thing. Like, and then this whole surface needs to be smooth, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so get that I think that's the one we think about, but we forget about the corners. Does that make sense? Well, uh, we, we think about the sh shape more. Yeah. And, and then, but but as far as the thickness, yeah. is, is there anything the to other, do the other, to... The other big one is, is the, um, the off ramp. That's a really big deal with nails is, is um, it tends to be like, how do I explain this? But like when, when you pull, the, if this is the string and I'm pulling my finger back like so, we try to round and, and shape this corner, right? So it's nice, has a nice round shape so the nail can get on there. But it's actually, as that nail slides, it's where it leaves, it's where the, the string leaves the nail that gives us that sometimes undesirable, um, crass, kind of bright kind of sound. And so by um, making sure to acknowledge that edge of the nail as well, not get so in, in, encumbered and, and, and stuck and focused on that side, but to remember that it has to leave the string on the other side, I find really helps. Um, and so I'll kind of go back and forth. That's why having it like that, you know, because then I can just go from this side and then I can go to that side and then I can play and then I can try it. And then, so I find that this is just the best. And then once it's used a, a bit, it's actually great because um, it's not as aggressive because, so then as I find closer and closer what sound I want, the paper is naturally eroding to a finer and finer grade. So I'm not making any, um, um, hasty decisions when it comes to nails because that's the worst is if you take off too much nail and then you yeah you can never put it back <laughs> oh you ruin the rest of your day and like and then like probably you, a whole week well i'm not weeks. gonna right yeah oh i'm not gonna sound now i'm gonna sound terrible for ever or whatever do you use nail protein i think i asked you that last time um no i used to but i i i think that, is that like a supplement yeah, after you use your nails for a while, I feel like they, um, it's almost like a boxer whose ribs get stronger through contact and friction. Like, once you use your nails a lot for playing, they start getting stronger. But until you can commit, like, months to using nails, like, they don't develop that strength. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, because you're saying once you cut or once it, it just ma out, It makes sense, trigger. right? Why wouldn't yeah. that... What? I mean, what is the science behind that? That's just totally made up. But <laughs> no, but I mean, like, I mean, that's what I surmise is like, why don't no, I but need? Maybe I used because I is. used to I mean, need. You know, we I get calluses to... on our fingers and stuff. I wonder if our nails are. I think our body responds. I think our body mm. naturally responds to what we do and what we use, and like when we, you know, like yeah. when we go to sleep, it's building all those synapse connections and those muscles that we use that day. That that's why. We get sore when we do a bunch of yard work that we're not used to doing is because our body is preparing to do more yard work again. It's not just like, yeah. oh, cool, that was nice. We're never going to need to do that ever. I mean, I think that's bro science at its best. I, I, I... No, I was, well, that's why I used to be a science major, but I quit and I decided to do music. No, but I thought that I, thought that I wanted to be. No, whatever. there's something to that, though, right? Yeah. I would have been a great scientist like a thousand years ago. I, like, I think that this because it yeah. looks like it. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great. 
<laughs> the great observer. Yeah, no, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what else to say about that. Well, I mean, <laughs> what is it that you're asking about, though? Is there something people can take that makes... Oh, yeah, I mean, there's, like, different um, stuff for your hair. I, I've seen my... This keratin, wife takes the, stuff, spread, yeah. hair, nail, mushroom, like. fungus things. Yeah, uh, yeah. people take. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, just putting, uh, putting coats of, of even just like um, Sally Jensen's or whatever it is, like on the, on the outside. Because as long as you're not doing um, Roscato, like your strums, you know that could, if you're just doing this kind of plucking, it doesn't bother. You know, you have to otherwise we get something with really hard finish. Um, but at least that can protect your nails. Um, enough to let them grow, um, if What's that's the thing. Biotin is that the biotin? I used to use even a product from Avon called like a nail strengthener and lengthener, and basically it was like this. I liked it because it was a liquid that you put on the nail and it would evaporate and leave no residue that you could see at all. And then, but it felt harder, like it made the nails Dang. tougher. Yeah, uh, Avon. Yeah, Talking yeah, to yeah. you, I need a sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, oh. Is it hard to find <laughs> that product? I don't know. My sister used to sell it, I think. And then I <laughs> got it from that. When I was in college, she bought me some bottles nice. of it. And I used it. No, it was good. And that worked for me because it, part of it was like, because I didn't always have strong nails. And so. Have you ever tried to be a flesh player? I've cut off my nails on purpose and played with flesh and developed that. It's a different technique, right? Well, and because you can get good sound with, with right. flesh, and you can get different tones too. And but it's it the reason one of the reasons I, I tend to go back to no nails probably once a year. I'll cut it off. Is one to take a break, um, but the other is, um, or maybe I'll I'll break one and then I don't have a, a gig coming up in foreseeable future. So I'm like, oh, I can take this as an opportunity to play with no nails for a while, um, and I, I'll regularly do that because. Um, how do I explain this? When you draw your hand across and, and back into the hand, and however you're playing, if there's a nail there, it's going to change the way you pull. However you shape that nail, if it's really long, maybe you'll have to start lifting from here to get around that nail, right? And so then you start playing with this sort of technique. I mean, and... You know, ideally, what I want to be able to do is play and just draw my finger back and not have the nail um, change anything about the way my hand naturally just wants to move. And so, by playing with a really oh, no nail, ideally, right, then you're truly able to move unencumbered. Um, but then, as soon as you start introducing nail, it's an important thing to keep it out of the way of the path of, and it, all it should be doing is enhancing what your hand naturally wants to do you know and so it, I, it tends to I, that's why but you I feel it in, inhibits like it, even if just a little well it can it just changes it, right, it, it right, just right. then you just have to change the way you hold your hand and I tend to play with medium length nails not totally short so again like I have to make certain accommodations which one one the thing that I do is I play sort of on the, the I, I pull off of the of, sort of at a 45 to the strings rather you than a, straight on you get a because sound. well it's a warmer sound but it also allows me to have longer nails because they're not getting in the way and I also tend to relax the tip joints a lot allowing this the string to just slide through and then depending on how tight you hold the tip joint when you pull the finger you, you're determining volume versus you know. the flesh what are you doing um, well flesh and nail you're you're trying to ideally you know I try to land right in between the uh, on the flesh and then move it to the nail sort of like so and then well, for those that periods way we don't where, anything, you, but where you cut your your finger where you cut your finger now oh yeah so. what um no sorry but like is that um a different I don't do you find that you have to be more aggressive a little bit with it to bring out the, that sound or it it what it does is it allows me to, I think, um, find home base again, wherever, like, because if there's no nails, then I can really just let my hand move the way it wants to, and when I draw my finger back, 
there's no nail because if say if, there, if there's a bit of nail there hanging over right um you have a few choices right you can like lean this way and then it can get out of the way or which is what i tend to do i actually kind of lean over to get fl some flesh to get a, a balance between oh. the nail so there's less resistance on the nail so that it, it can pass over um so it doesn't get caught on the string gotcha. um yeah and and but by playing with no nails and then bringing it back it, it really helps to create um, a healthy habit of precision. And then I know exactly where my landing point is. I know exactly how much nail I need, so I'm not using too much nail, um, excessive nail that's um, just getting in the way. Because, I mean, <clears throat> longer nails are good for certain things. Short nails are good for certain things. Short nails are really good for playing fast music. Long nails are really good for playing expressive slow music. You know, um, because a, a long nail has more like tonal options. Yeah, 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 tonal options, and you can get this like really great sort of sweep. Um, you know where you um, almost bow this the <laughs> the nail across the string. Um, that uh, and I, what is that, that way? I'll what is that in like slow it. motion? You're just kind of sweeping across. Yeah. It. So it's almost like a bit of a, right? And then slide up. That's cool. Same thing the other way. I should have just brush it and then release it. Wow. I like that. Super clean. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and it looks really cool too. If you're up on stage, you can get off. Like, yeah. Well, some of it can look like theatrics, right? But that's another thing that I'll do actually in the morning is I'll just play random things that feel good, so that I'm just getting in tune with, like, oh, where's my thumb? How does my index finger feel? <laughs> I like it. You have an album in you that's just random, like <laughs> thoughts in the morning. I bet. Um, you know what's a fun one is um, let's see. Yeah.
Bit, it's a bit faster. I don't know why I decided to arrange this. The most random thought came to me. I thought that would be a great one to play. People would love that. I used to watch it as a kid. Did you guys ever watch Cheers? Yeah. <laughs> I get it now. I'd go there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go right now. ukulele players out there are feeling a little inadequate it, it's like Ian's the type of guy that got a scholarship to Yale for <laughs> guitar you know he's not a normal human being so <laughs> don't worry about it I think it goes and then from here is electric guitar <laughs> Bing. Bing. I don't know and then there was a little if I'm brave really what I would do is That's what I find. I tend to find that, like, I also do, like, performance arrangements and then um, studio arrangements. Mm. Something like that yeah. sometimes. Like, with certain passages. Like, live, I'm going to try to throw in the harmonic on the and, and then, you know, in the studio, I could try for the uh. Mm. That's cool. Because yeah. you can always do another take in the, a yeah, take right, in the yeah. studio. But when you're live, it's like, what you do is what everyone's going to remember. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> yep. So there's this, like, and then so, or pl 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 like, playing it down here versus playing it over here. Like, one is, like, a safer arrangement that feels better, you know, um, gives you certain things. It's a guarantee, right? But then, Does it depend on the day as well? Yeah, I guess it depends on how much time you'd have to put into it, things like that, right? Um the only well, difference kinds between of him and right? you is like, he's I mean, conscious of being different. You're like, oh, did I? I just do this <laughs> <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> no, I, I right? Well, like, or like, 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 the, for instance, like at the end of a song, are you going to go, or are you going to go, like, and arpeggiate? Like, are you feeling that? Are you, you, you going to get it? 
Because it's safe to just go, and yeah. nobody's gonna care. I usually go. Through you know who's gonna. Zone. You know who's gonna know. You know who's gonna know. Byron Yasui. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Byron in your <laughs> head. Oh, I loved. I loved how you arpeggiated the chord in order in ascending. It's not fair because he remembers everything he hears. And then, and then, and then when you're ending <laughs> two, three, four. So that you land that note is the downbeat. Two, three, and that would be late. Like milliseconds. Yeah, you start the roll. Two, three. Mm. To land it. And we yeah, you it's almost like The end of the roll. This little subtleties that. Well, in, right? It is. You think it, you you think it's just. Then it's all of a sudden I made field. it. All of a sudden yeah. I made it really difficult. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just not one strum. Well, <laughs> it's it's awareness. That's right? it. Well, that's the kind of thing that it, like if you're doing it right, you're spending a good half an hour talking about how important that is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it all matters. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. No, that's what I love. But with like Byron, like those the talks with him, I keep going back to him today. Him. Did you um, um, take courses from him at UH? I, uh, I, I, he was my first um, hearing teacher, oral oral training. Oh. Um, and I remember um, he walked that's... up to the board and he said, "Did somebody name a song?" And somebody said, uh, "Hey Jude," you know. And then somebody else, and then he said, "Somebody name a key," and then. Somebody yelled E flat, and then Byron laughed, and he went, Haha, "Must be a pianist." <laughs> and I was, I was like eighteen. I'm like, "What are you talking?" That's a, that's a. And now I get it. Like that's funny because piano players use E flat, but even then, like, anyways, the g- level of genius that guy. Anyways, okay, so so then he he proceeded to say, "Okay, E flat, nice." He, like that second, turned around, had the board with the lines on it, you know. The, green board with the white lines with chalk started writing out hey Jude like well first thing key signature and then he went and started writing out the sheet music you know basically yeah and I was just like how is he doing that from the top of his head without an instrument like he's just you know because he internalizes pitches right it's like there's do there's like so now I understand that what he did was he went da 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 like me so me so he went so fa mi re do so me so he found five three so if we're in the key of E flat then it's B flat G right but and like from there it's just relative pitch but, well there's a lot to, like you have to right to know you have to know like your key signatures mm. oh, you have to know yeah. like there's a lot of, of Things behind getting to where the, what he did, <laughs> where you're just writing it out. Yeah, <laughs> you just you know, oh, what song? Cool. What key? Right. Oh, cool. I mean, it would be like this. And like, how are you doing that off the top of your head? <laughs> how many how many hours do you think he's like everything just musical? Any anything that he's done with music? How many hours do you think? Yeah, but oh, does he we're, in we're talking music? about hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like That's you say, a lot if you say ten thousand is mastery, he's well into wizardry. Mm. Yeah. Oh, like. Yeah. On top of so in quantum being music, you know, quantum <laughs> level. Yeah, I, I think he he might have perfect pitch. Huh? He does. Does he have perfect pitch? I don't know if th- that's because everything that he's every song that he's heard, and he can he can just do a, a whole arrangement in chords. I feel like he. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I feel, I feel like he has. Um, I have to. I'd have to ask him about this. I wonder if he has. Because I have another friend who has what they call absolute perfect pitch. There's two different versions. Right? Yeah, what's the difference? So, from what I know, perfect pitch is almost like a database of things that you've heard. Mm-hmm. Absolute pitch is the ability to distinguish pitch like A or a middle C from... by a, like by sense. So that's not C440. That's C441. Yeah. Oh. Or C three thirty nine. It's like they can they can it's actually so, feel. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that's, that's not A four forty. You're doing. Oh, you're tuned to four forty two. Nice. <laughs> and then like, how did you? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I feel it. Yeah. That, yeah. I have you probably book. see it as like a built in. Uh, what's the thing to measure? 
sound waves. And well, and some of it's like an experience thing, I feel like, because mm. I swear sometimes I go to my guitar and I play it and I'm like, ooh, feels a little low. Like, just like, And I don't know if that's an inkling of that really cool ability, but like that same, it's almost that same concept, I feel like, that being really aware of subtlety, like of you yeah. know, tune. A memory of you know pitch. Like, do you, you have perfect. I have I have, ab- I have a relative. I have absolutely terrible pitch. I have uh, <laughs> I have <laughs> no, that's a <laughs> relative pitch. Yeah, so I can tell if something is in tune, like in a recording, if it's in tune with each other. Yeah, you know, right. I'm always that person. Like uh, big sounds in flat. <laughs> something like you know, you, yeah, don't, yeah, you don't yeah. want me to listen to your mix. Um, but no, yeah. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, you want them to you to listen to it because you know, like, oh, yeah, that was flat. Yeah, I, I tend to hear it a lot. Do you do that? Um, sort of training with your students, like, do you do where, like, you know, you a two interval where you're like, what's the I introduce the concept of intervals and like that different intervals have meaning, like, the, the idea between a, a, a minor second, you know, is um, is it. How, how intervals have meaning in music, right? And so when you contextualize that, if you played it, it's a much softer mm. rub, right? Whereas if I were to match that with something like, that's far more crass. Like, it just got worse. So it's like there's a level of tension, then there's almost like equal level of tension, but beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then there's like... That tension level all of the tension, way. more tension, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Suspension, but, tension, yeah. Suspenseful tension. <laughs> but depending on the interval that you choose, yeah. Thirds versus fourths, fifths. Tritones. Do you um, primus? Do you have, incorporate like wrong notes into your playing, like jazz style? Um, well, I, like I said earlier, like I try to use um, the mornings that like coming to the instrument or warm ups, even anytime to try to listen to my hands and say like okay well where do you want to um go today (laughs) um what do you is there some is there an area that you feel like uh needs attention that's maybe these two are feeling sticky or something or whatever it is right and and um it tends to be those areas that we think that are the deficit that we like really focus on and work on then they become our strengths right um i remember when i went I moved, when I moved to the mainland for school, and I, I always thought like I'm left-handed natu- like I'm a left-handed person, and I thought you know I tend to do a lot of chords, a lot of big things here, and I didn't think much of my right hand, so I always worked a lot of my right hand. And then when I came home, um, I remember one of my friends said like, "Wow, your right hand looks really great," you know, and nobody had really told me that, like, but he hadn't seen it in three years, you know. And he's like, "Whoa, your right hand looks totally different. Like you definitely did something," and I was like, "Oh well, thanks. I didn't." From the driver's seat, it didn't feel like I changed a lot here, but um, yeah. What what is that right hand like? Talk more about or or is there? It's it's like you're pulling kind of more straight up, huh? Well, there's if you imagine um, two legs as the strings, and this is the large knuckle, and then this is the <laughs> middle the middle knuckle is my elbow and then the tip joint is my wrist um if i'm there's a combination of things that happen most of it's like more of what i'm I'm, a recent thought that i've had is it's almost a combination of like how much of this plus how much of this it always comes up to 100 percent to get through but like do i need if i if i resist and i put more tension here um like the further forward that I am, I can move more from here. Um, but if I'm back here, all of a sudden now I have to lift from here in order to get 
past this other string. Like if I want to play an arpeggio. It's like how you right? Like that. that. And it and I don't want it to sound like muted, right? In order you want them to ring. And so if this knuckle is directly above the string that I'm playing, it allows my finger just to move straight back and I don't have to lift from here. If so how do I so if the string is here and and my knuckle, this large knuckle, is straight above it, that allows me to pull the finger straight back. Using less but if, strength or force. But, yeah, but if it's back here, say, right, and I'm, I'm maybe my hand is planted here and I'm trying to pluck, now I can't... See, when I'm, when I'm here, I'm able to only move this large knuckle and essentially just do that with my finger, right? This is not engaged. This is just all I'm doing is that. But now if I go here, see the problem is, if I don't want to touch this string, now I need to engage this middle knuckle in order to get past that string. So now, now we're opening up this whole can of other things that I need to do, but I don't need to do. <laughs> like, uh, because I've planted my hand here, which is why I tend to not promote that. I think that, like, that's an effect, like if I'm going for a palm mute thing and I'm and I'm pulling then I have to pull from the middle knuckle there then that's cool then like duh, that's what you, you got to do to make it happen but like most of the time I like the ability to play an arpeggio with the least amount of Effort. things that I have to do mm. to make that happen and if all if I can find a way to play by just in, essentially going like doom and like pulsing only that knuckle right there which is a, a dexterity exercise that I'll do. I'll just practice, like, only moving that knuckle, or only moving that knuckle, so that when I put it in the context of playing, I'll practice making sure that my jaw is relaxed, my feet are relaxed, my shoulders are relaxed, while I do that, too. That's, like, Anyways. the first two digits, right? You're not moving like the last digit. That's in yeah. No, no. It's just it's just these. It's just this one. The the tip joint you um keep um <laughs> flaccid um uh to uh, keep it out of the way because if if it gets tight like you start to get more bite from the nail and that's fine if that's what you want you know but like that's where that's where it becomes a thing so like. So say I'm playing, like, actually a great piece of demonstrated is one of the, um, what is it, the, um... Oh, turn, turn this way a little bit more. So I, yeah. Um... This is because of the approach of my hand. It's a leaning back a little. I can do a rest stroke, which gives a very forceful sound, right? So it's great for melody. Bum. But then from here, because my hand is also leaned further back, I'll just lightly play and move a little more from the middle joint and try to find that sweet spot for the volume. Then. and release the it wants to go to you're in the key of C it wants to resolve and when it resolves there's less so if you if you exaggerate that um, that wasn't that was a so I'm following the line there there's if it's going down and then always trying to so I'm 
that's a great almost etude. You know, I, I think that one's Honya Kawai, um, Ernest Kai. And the idea is that you're developing this. It's the ability to hear two things at once, really, is what you're doing. You're like, and then technique is a result of wanting to hear that balance. You know, like we need to find a way to do what we want to hear. And so, like, to be able to play. that at the same volume while we move the melody like and this just stays soft the whole time don't crescendo this like that's right you're splitting your thinking but also technique and so like to play this is very different than playing like da 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 playing Da, 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 like where you land hardest on the top note because that's your everything is going there it's a landing point you know and and but to play like that that's that's a technique that's that, the emotion and it's it's a, it's about using it's guided practice and what's guiding it is your ear is your musical decisions you know and then committing right so it's like da 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 don't get tired halfway, like da 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 like and then it's all the way to the last one, you know. Um that rhythm with the Ernest Kai song. This is a kind of a waltz. It's a waltz, yeah. So like um Well it's a great study because you have this separation of um melody and accompaniment. So show people like um, how to like start to like practice that like that um, the basic rhythm of that and then how to like put melody oh. over. Well, one of the easiest ways to do it would be just to um, play a C chord and a G seven, and if you started there, and we call that a rest stroke, where you land into the guitar or the ukulele. Like so, and what that does is it sets the string off vibrating more this way, um, up and down, uh, perpendicular to the soundboard, and I feel like that vibration translates more into the, through the bridge into the face of the instrument and making it vibrate more aggressively, versus uh, when you pluck the string sideways and then release it. Right, you get different sounds depending. So if I use the same amount of pressure, you get different attacks. Um, so. I'll do a rest stroke there on the ring finger and then thumb index middle very late a lot of people aren't even short. using their ring finger yet no. then g7 c
impress her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can already imagine, like, I would want to, like, get more intense with the backing. You know, it's like to separate the two. Yeah, I, I spent, I'll spend about. a lot of time even improvising a little etude almost like that, you know, where it's like just really honing in on my ability to separate voices. So maybe it's something like... Being able that's to keeping... that's uh, really challenging. I've... Yeah. And then whatever it becomes. <laughs> Illegal chord number yeah. seven. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely... And they're, they're, oh my gosh, I mean, if we, if we get into that, but the idea of bringing out, our, in, within an arpeggio, bringing out a note, like, so, if it's, if it's, I think one thing we're used to hearing is say this, this is our, a very common arpeggio, right? Thumb, index, middle, ring. But the way that I'll get it to go so rapid is to start with all four on the string. And the trick is in the is in the rotation. So going from ring to thumb, and then from thumb to fingers. So starting with all four, ring switch, and then switch, and then that sets you up. thing um, I'll try to make one louder so thumb loud make index loud so. same pattern right so it's still but now is one. And then I'll make this one. That's a crazy exercise. But like it, it would it works right because like depending on where the melody is in your chord. Yeah. Helps a lot with yeah. control. So that way I can just basically improvise something. Or <laughs> right? It's all just the same. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Ten. Just right there. Da, 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 da.
when I had nails, I would just do it just because it felt good to do. Yeah. I kind of... Yeah. I mean, that's like deep practice. That's like... <laughs> It's like well, well beyond the let me learn this well, song stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, because like when it comes to something like that, right? Actually, right there, I'm already thinking. So. I'm playing two notes at the same time. But this one gets more pressure. So, essentially, can I play... Index and middle, right, right there on the inner two strings, and then, but balance them so that I hear more of this string, or balance it so I hear more of this string. It's all in the prep, so if I put a little more pressure on this index finger and actually depress the string a little before I play, versus if I put more pressure on the middle finger before I play the pair. Same thing like in a, in a chord for four, if I want to hear more on this string, right, so can I It's the same, but I'm thinking. Hey, are you just thinking that out, or I mean, there's distinct like technique to yeah. Which well, yeah, one no, gets... I'm because I'm putting a little more pressure on my thumb. Hopefully, you can hear it. Oh, it's, oh, it's subtle. Definitely it's, can it's... hear it, but like if I. Put more pressure on that thumb so that when I follow through, like the fingers are light, but the thumb has a little extra. And then I do the same thing for the index. I'll depress that string in, and then I still pluck all four at the same time, but this one starts from further in. Oh, okay. So that's another example. So like using out of the arpeggio, bringing out of each four. So the others are so it's like loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud. Soft.
No, 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 no. There's I that. heard that too. Yeah, it came back and then it went and then. What is that? That buzzy oh. sound. It's random. Have you thought about like ukulele instructional type type things too, or is it just like you're teaching oh, all yeah. day? Oh no, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I I think that I I often think about you know writing books, you know, yeah. having a. Having a, a a beginning ukulele and a beginning guitar book um a graded series would be great you know um but i feel like i i, I just want to have a little more time to uh what, what one thing it was one thing would be to have the time <laughs> to do that um but you know to really think about um what is it because i'm still i feel like i'm still learning too about um, I've learned a lot about teaching over the last couple of years too with, with distance and um, in a way when you're writing a book you're essentially doing the ultimate distance teaching you know you're like never having you're assuming that the person's going to be able to read this and see the video and get it and you don't need to intervene right so it's like I mean I, I, I want to have I want to make sure that I'm before I, I set forth <laughs> on on such an endeavor that I'm, I'm mindful of, of uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like that game, you know, where you, <clears throat> it, making sure that everything that I'm saying and everything that, that's going in there is, is meaningful and that every word is impactful because it should be the sort of resource, ideally, that people could go back and read and reread or watch and rewatch and get something else the next time without too much of my meandering. And you're yeah. being preemptive with what you know the questions are that come through when you're showing things, right? And oh, yeah. Well, I find one of the one of the major things that I want to tackle is um, um, the ability to visualize the fretboard and the, the ability to... Um, two, two things. Um, get in the way of everybody's playing. Three things get in the way of most, a lot of musicians playing. One of them is dexterity, so the ability to move your hands just to be able to tell them what to do. Like, that's that's a pretty important thing when you play an instrument. And so, like, if you want to play and you haven't done that before, that's something we should probably talk about, um, is your ability to... Because, like, until you've... If you've never played a musical instrument and you're, like, 40 going to play, like, or, or retired and going to play an instrument, like, hey, I'm going to pick up this thing I've always wanted to do, you kind of got to go with it knowing that like you've never asked your hands to only move the index finger by itself ever before in your life. You've never tried to send that connection there. So how do we address that? You know, yeah. That's an issue that I would really like to tackle. I think that I have, that's one thing I love about this whole um, um, synapse, to, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but like the ability to develop synapses. I had a great teacher, Lisa, that talked with me about that and how to um, target certain places in your body so that you can really only move that, you know, nothing else in your body, no other triggers, no other extra unintentional motions or withheld tensions, you know, so that you're genuinely relaxed and everything that you're doing is in the service of the music. And so essentially, you know, you can, you can, because really if you're only, when you, on one side, it's very difficult to play like that, but on the other hand, it's very easy, right? If you're only if you're being very economical about what you're playing, you know. But that takes a very mindful approach, um, which is where patience and discipline <laughs> come in. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah, patience, discipline. There would have to focus. be some like you can have all the focus passages you in your book on just like uh, I don't know almost more like philosophical or well because like you can have all the focus arts. you want and if you, you could want it like crazy but if you don't have the discipline mm -hmm. which is like the experience and the knowledge and that somebody told you what to do and like you believe them enough that you have faith to try it out long enough to let it sink in which is another thing to have faith in yourself and just get but it's like right it's like do you have do you trust in the process and that's often why people struggle I think with music especially when it gets tougher and it gets harder you know because it's 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 that commitment to yourself and the willingness to believe that you can do it even when it sounds like clearly at the moment you can't you know 
And in the spite of that, we still are like, yep, I'm going to keep trying. That's like, I don't know what's wrong with musicians who are like slightly, um, what's the word, masochistic like that. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, oh, I, oh that sounds terrible. Oh, I can't do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do more of that. <laughs> What is that chord? Oh my god, that's terrible. I don't understand it. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How did you, t- you know, right? And so, but I think so. But if you have like, so that's the, the it's the it's the eternal feeding. You know, it just it just it's a process that just feeds itself. Um, you get better, and then you get excited, and then you try again, and then you set forth on the next plateau and journey. <clears throat> yeah, but how do you focus? all you want and if the discipline's not there yeah and then a patient if you're not patient with yourself and you don't give yourself the time to learn the thing that you should have if you have a healthy amount of respect for the art then there shouldn't be any problem but if there's that see we're getting deep again yeah and and i I understand why you haven't written the book yet and but when it does come out it's going to be epic for sure because like you're so thoughtful and it's going to be i want it to be meaningful yeah right right? it's not just another book it's like no what we're doing this if you're reading this and we're doing this (laughs) i'm on does that make sense like that right i'm not writing it for anybody who's not in this if you're reading this and you just want a quick like thing that's cool that's i'm sorry to disappoint you (laughs) You're going to be sorely disappointed in this. It's going to be... Yeah. This is Miyagi Title. style. Yeah, well, it'll be Beginning Advanced Ukulele. Yeah. It'll be the name of the book. How do you start, right? Yeah. Knowing, like, we want to go advanced, but we've got to start at the beginning. Well, there's a lot of things that, Work like, way up. I, I think, like, um, we haven't even considered yet. You know, that you talk about that... People past. like me are like, oh, geez, I haven't even like thought about that. <laughs> past to past to virtuosity. Well, it's like, and I and at this point, I've had thousands, probably of students. I mean, pro- I probably had a thousand students. If I've had, I mean, I want to say thousands, but I've like just the high school. Yeah, I mean, and then college and things. There's oh, a lot then. of things these guys of students, do yeah. that, like, I think just comes from like they're, um, like they're trying to make music and like they're like say if the accent is on a certain string like it's it's like happening but with you you put so much thought into like consciously being able to like zero in on all these things too so you're like uniquely qualified to teach people how to think about those kind of things yeah well that's one reason why i I really want to that's why i love to teach actually is is um with with the high school and, and um it is one of my passions for sure is because it, it would be very selfish of me to have a lot of experience and then just to be like, cool, I'm just going to keep this. I'm just going to sit on this. <laughs> let <it marinate. laughs> I'm just going to let this get <laughs> nice and stale. <laughs> so nobody else knows about it. <laughs> you know, it's like that. Well, a lot of Why musicians you with your talent do go the route of just trying to be the, um, you know, performing, recording artist and so it is nice that you well, went the route of teaching well i i love teaching because i always as you can tell i always shout out my teachers and i think that that it's an important yep it is. i'm not just saying that it's not just like a bumper sticker but my teachers are important it's it's a thing it's an and it's like i didn't go into you know a master's in performance thinking that you know i would love to teach People had to play a C chord at 7 30 <laughs> in the morning on a Monday. And that's that's but at the same time it's it's so great, you know, because what I see the kids do as far as um, finding the ones who find the guitar and, and the ukulele as a passion and that they really want to do it, of course, those are always great. But then there's always there's also the kids that you know that it's just their chance to get away from the chaos of the rest of their day and they just want to make some nice sounds and, and hear the guitar and you know and if they're just working on tuning and you know whatever it is like that's a very it's a chance to just escape the craziness you know it's also a skill that like they're gonna have through life that they can build on and oh, they can actually, play with you know, family really and... make music or come back to at some point and have some basis. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, it's not just uh, teachers, it's like the quality of teachers. So, yeah. Can you teach us more? was a low C and G and then the top four are standard um, so it's sort of like a pseudo drop C tuning kind of thing it's not really slack key but it's like half by he yeah patch so G and D and then E on the top so not quite tarot patch the 
this is um, Feed the Birds, Mary Poppins. Nice. Julie Andrews. <laughs> like Tom Hanks played uh, Walt Disney. Did you guys see that? It was about the making of uh, Mary Poppins. I, I mean, the the story meant a lot to Walt Disney as a kid, but the writer of it, she didn't really like care for him or didn't want this thing to be made into some sort of cartoony thing or mm. whatever. So a lot of the story was about mm. him trying to convince her, but like what was really interesting was like how integral the music was to the making of the film in terms of winning her over and like making it like a hit it's like having composers in there working on stuff and they're getting feedback and yeah i forget the name of the movie but it's uh yeah tom hanks plays walt disney so nice oh. yeah i can check that one out Beautiful compos beautiful, beautiful composition there, Ian. That was amazing. Like at the end when you started to do it in all uh, harmonics, I'm like, Jesus, this guy's <laughs> gotta go next level every time. <laughs> So what are you moving to now? 
Dad fad. D A D F sharp A D. Before time, yeah, do it. If, uh, <laughs> if we hold on together, if we hold on together, what set of strings will get me that sound? <laughs> Those are just weird. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah. The normal tension. Oh, I was just bathing and. I know. So, oh, crap. Oh, crap. we talked about it last time. I mean, obviously, part of it is. I mean, majority of it is Ian. But the Sheridan uh, lattice brace guitar is quite the beast. <laughs> Sounds like a cello. <laughs> <laughs> I know. because it's so thin over here that it makes it very responsive. Um, Lattice is a kind of an advanced way to give equalized support throughout while it, the whole top kind of moves like a speaker. But um, I was talking to, you know, um, I was talking to Clay about this the other day because the new Pono Master series is, is Lattice and it's, it gives you so much and he's like telling me how like it's almost like he would need to spend time with it to really like because it's almost like you play in a 
differently. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying earlier is like, um, it changes the the way you play. No, this instrument, every time you upgrade this, well, here's the thing, like, because you end up, okay, so it's the idea is like when you, as a musician, I think that there's a natural progression that takes place, especially for people who are serious about playing. And what happens is you you start on it. A lot of times you start on an instrument that's maybe like, you know, whatever it is that you get. But for some reason or another, it doesn't work, and you, and we have to find that instrument. And and what happens is, a lot of times you 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 almost have to graduate from the instrument you're playing, you know. And and what happens is because it's because your technique gets better, because your facility gets better because you're playing chords higher up on the neck, because you're playing things that are faster with more intricate parts, you're demanding more from the instrument, you're naturally going to need to upgrade. Like, um, And what happens is different instruments have different responses. The lattice tends to be a very unforgiving instrument. That's the only thing about this is like, it speaks very clearly, and if you play something out it's going to be very 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 polished <laughs> right? and the very word. clear very clear that's the analogy <laughs> i was trying to go for, say earlier you know what I mean? you were saying you were talking about a, a, a scuff on an instrument right and like the sandpaper right yeah and like, if you don't get out uh, you know sanding marks from a previous grit and then you are up high enough in grit you're just polishing the sanding marks from previous yeah it'll just bring out any yeah, imperfections yeah. and just highlight it that much more and that's what playing on a lattice does it's like anything if there's any rough spot in your nail you're gonna i can you can hear it it goes it goes it translates straight from the string it goes straight into the bridge straight into the guitar and it's like hello high fidelity every single thing that you're thinking and feeling and and doing is coming out through the instrument so you better be calm and you better be ready to do this and whatever you know what i mean i mean that's because yeah. that's the thing it's like because it's it's really revealing it's like very when you're behind a very good instrument with a loud amp or whatever it is it's very like okay here it is that's how i think of these <laughs> josephson microphones here there's like um maybe warmer options and there's colored kind of it's like brutally honest yeah it's brutally right. honest it's yeah. very the detail will show it all so yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah but you have to get used to that if you're used to that like people are used to being on camera I am not that's why I keep putting the guitar in weird places to the <laughs> mic and things it's like, I never it. got used to it so that's okay. so, <laughs> but yeah like uh, swimming through jello sometimes. Yeah.
Jeez. <laughs> you guys wow. Think that my ears are melted or it's like, oh. man, it's so bad. I completely melted <laughs> yeah, right. through that whole demonstration. Beautiful. There's like, an entire orchestra. Is that a guitar? Jeez. Well, that's the thing I was talking about with, with this instrument is it tells you everything, right? And it, it'll, it'll say everything. So if you're thinking it, it'll come out. And it, because it, it can it can speak very quiet. And it's still heard, you know? Um, and that having that is important because guitar, you know, acoustic guitar especially, like we have a limit on the volume. So if we can, in a way, expand on that quiet, you know, um, it, it makes it feel like we have a much larger... Mm -hmm. area than we do but that involves being comfortable playing piano and playing really soft which is a technique which you can't just do you have to practice playing that way you can't just play softly you oh, have yeah. to practice playing like it seems boring and stupid but I mean like you know what I mean it's not it's, and yeah like all of those the, all of those emotions like you have to practice having gone rah, da, da, da. <laughs> like I mean <laughs> you can't just do that like you know, this is just happen. I mean, but here's the thing: is like if you choose, if you decide that that part of the song is gonna go rah da da dum, then all of a sudden now you can go rah da da dum. Like I mean, you can really commit to it because you know what you're gonna do. But if you don't know what you're gonna do, what are you committing to? Anyways, was that fast enough? I think you've you've also given um, so much attention and time to tone that the tones you get are so mesmerizing. I mean, yeah. it's the guitar, yeah, but like a lot of that body and warmth comes from just the subtleties of your technique. What's that? I, was, I was talking about um, embracing the instrument almost. very cello like just swimming in an ocean of different like if I notice the string is a little sharp then I'll lean in on the pushing it that way to, to flatten the string mm. to make it a little more in tune hmm. or same vice versa if it's a little flat you can pull it to make it in tune oh yeah so you can use vibrato to intonate your chords this, this vibrato a rock vibrato only pulls the string you're only tightening it but a uh, uh, side to side vibrato, classical vibrato, uh, when you pull, when you go side to side like this, when you rock the hand lengthwise with the string, what we're doing is um, when I go this way, I'm loosening the tension here, right? Because oh, right, I'm putting right, tension right. that way, so yeah. it gets looser there, so the sound goes down. And when I pull this way, oh. it, it goes up, and so right. That's and so cool. in the middle of the guitar, it's easier because this is where the least amount of tension is. And so it's really hard to vibrato like the first fret. Mm. Like you're not going to get any tension. There's no. So you might, maybe you can do that, but like that's the only. Mode. Yeah, you can like lengthen your sustain a little bit, but the pitch movement isn't much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also it helps with sustain. You know, that's the other thing about this guitar is like talk about sustain. Like. Even the treble strings or treble range has bass <laughs> what is Sheridan's uh, wait list like um, this was build. back in 2010 so I have no idea oh, yeah, what it yeah, is yeah. now right. um, if he's still doing them you know what I mean I don't know um, but that was uh, I, I I know that I, I wonder how many at that point it was like six <laughs> months or something but I, I think I jumped the line maybe but 
I don't know if I jumped live, but I shouldn't say that. But um, it, it was just, yeah, I don't know. I got it pretty quick. But it helped because I had money ready to go. So that was good. Like, the, the Yale gave me a scholarship to, for an instrument, and they said yeah. you can buy an instrument, right? And so basically it was like, here's the money, you know. And I was like, okay, cool. $20,000. I could have <laughs> dug myself as big of a hole as I wanted, yeah. But I chose an $8,500 hole that I thought sounded as good as a $25,000. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, they're probably a lot more expensive now, but yeah. <laughs> what uh, what tuning are you in? Dad pad. Yeah. Dad pad works for quite a few. Yeah. I'm trying not to use it now. I've used it so much, but it's just like, it works so well. It's such a good... And it works really well, especially for like a lot of piano songs are in E flat. And then if you just... I, I, what I'll do is I'll put a capo, actually put it in dad pad, put a capo first fret, and then I'll play from the score. I'll try to... Uh, find because find it's easy to find a piano um, reduction a lot of times with these things mm -hmm. and then I uh, will take the capo off and then re figure it out again but that seems tedious but yes it is alright but <laughs> dad fad you yeah. ever play with that? no I only go to like drop D that's the only other tuning I or uh This one is a D. It's a G. D, G, D, A7, D, minor, 1, 5, 1. Okay.
What song was that? Bare Necessities. Bare Necessities. Oh. <laughs> oh I feel like Disney should like hire, like, pay you for an album or this is good stuff, man. At least a high-paid gig at Old Lonnie or something. <laughs> Two thousand. Are, are you gigging these days? Or? Small kind. Yeah. Here Weddings and there. Here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, really, my my main gig is uh, being a husband and father. Hey. So that's my main gig. Yeah. And, that's beautiful uh, thing. That. Best gig. Yeah. And your I'm son not too is worried now about uh, 13 months. 13 months. Going on 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, so. Yeah. No, I think he's figured out no, which is bad. No. I went, I went to take something. He's like, no. I was like, hey, did he say no? <laughs> I, I think that's a good thing to learn. That's good. But anyways, now it just it just creates another <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> Sorry. for you to come up with that arrangement uh, about a week damn yeah it's a lot of work a lot of <laughs> chords and one lot week of acrobatics bro you know earlier you were talking about um the i think you said three basic things to consider when starting in like the first was dexterity yeah i was just like watching you and thinking about that but like what were the other ones sorry yeah um um, the ability to um, be your own best teacher, and what that because no book is is going to mean anything, and no lessons are going to mean anything unless you go home and practice. So, like the importance of that, you know, the self in the, in the process, like, and you know, it's what they say, like no pain, no gain, things like that. Like they'll just say things like that, right? But 
that seems harsh. Like, I don't like that. I don't like, <laughs> so I'm looking for another way to say that, like, it's without pain. Um, but it's like putting in the work. Yeah. Um, you know, if you think about, think about music, like a garden, you know, about how many plants have you bought at the hardware store that, you know, only make it a month, you know, because you have the intention of setting forth and, and you have this opportunity when you get a book or when you have an instrument, right? It's like getting a seedling, you have an opportunity to grow, right? But are you gonna water it? Are you gonna fertilize? Are you gonna put it in a place that it's gonna get enough sun or get enough shade or get whatever the heck anthuriums need, right? I mean, cause you can't just put it wherever and you can't just treat it however. Mm -hmm. It needs to be in the right place with the right ingredients and the right amount of attention in order to prosper and send them there. So, with you know, first is, is ability to um, get to know your own body. Second is the ability to get to know your own mind, right? The ability to control your thoughts because where is your mind? Where are, you, are you focused? Are you working on the thing that you're working on or are you thinking about something else? That's whose fault, right? And are you willing to put in the work? And then having... Um, you know, dexterity, focus, and um, I guess that kind of ties into the, the faith of, of playing, you know, like believing that you can be better, so you put in the work. Because you don't just do it because you, like, I think a lot of musicians go, undergo, oh, go through the same process where, like, you think to yourself, like, man, I just wish that people could hear what I hear. Like, this isn't coming out the way that I think it goes. Right. And like, that's a very common struggle is to like become that conduit to take off the rust, to become a really smooth oiled machine that can just speak what it is that we hear. And that takes trust in yourself. And if you, cause if you, I mean, cause if you don't think you can do it, you're not going to do it. Garen's that's Garen's right. So that doesn't help. So we got to first, like, so Right, so we gotta first. You gotta be able to, because if you can't move your hands, and you can't, how are you gonna play? If you don't know how to put your mind on practice, then how are you gonna learn? And if you don't believe that you can do it, then why are you doing it? Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Big sense. No, no, no. I feel. Just... I feel like I was like. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> like, I, no, no, no. I, I, I think <laughs> the viewers, yeah. viewers need to see to hear that, because like. Mm. Everyone's well, looking for some kind of shortcut, but they really don't. Well, and why are you doing it? Because yeah. if you're only doing it for fun, then don't be that hard on yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it's that, right? <laughs> like, if you're only doing it for a hobby and it's not that going great, then... then you're doing it for fun, but you want to be, like, up here, you know, but you're not yeah. willing to get do all the dirty work to get there, you know? <laughs> Just be, take it easy on yourself. Yeah. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. Take the time. Give yourself the time. Do it because you love Have it. Have patience with yourself. Give yourself opportunity to grow. Give yourself permission to take a break. Give yourself permission to take a rest. Yeah. You know, that 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 goes into like mental health of, mm -hmm. of of playing and finding inspiration and staying inspired, being an inspired musician for a lifetime, and not just because there's a song that you currently are excited about. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> That faith thing is interesting too, as far as like even the perf like putting it out there. I don't know. I have a hard time doing that even with words, it's, as far as the you know thought to putting it out there without stuttering and using all kinds of word whiskers and whatnot. But like musically, just letting it flow from your head through to your fingers. Yeah, becoming a conduit. Right? Yeah, for music to channel. Um, so that at a certain point, all you're doing is listening and adjusting, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listening and adjusting as if your fingers are just on pilot. Yeah, autopilot. yeah, because you've ran them through every possible yeah. scenario. You've made so much mistakes, you 
you know, more ways to not make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. And also, too, it's like when you're listening to an arrangement or playing with other people, your your listening ability is so important because you have to pay attention to what, what's going on, what you're doing, what the key signature is, what, what chords are supposed to be playing at the same time. So it's kind of like your hands do move on autopilot because now you're more focused on this part of the music yeah. where it should come from rather than the application of a whole bunch of technique scales. Yeah. There's a big difference between knowing about something and knowing something. Big difference. Yeah. And if you if you <laughs> to know about something is nice. I know about a lot of stuff, but <laughs> Yeah. Right? But to, to really know something and to be inside of some like to really know a piece of music and to really understand the melody and how it lines up with the harmony and what the groove is and what the meter is and what the application is and what the harmonies are and if you're reharmonizing why and all those like, there's so many relationships I mean that's basically what music boils down to is relationships right and I think I mentioned that last time I was on the show or, you know it's just this idea that um, it's our personal relationship the first relationship is our own personal relationship with the instrument right I mean that's the most obvious but really the most important is that instrument's relationship with the audience the person doing it almost doesn't matter we think like oh it's about me playing this thing but it's about the person hearing it and mm. the instrument yeah and what and the person behind the wheel i'm just driving i'm just you know yeah <laughs> their experience hmm but but if it's selfless, then there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, there's, I mean you kind of have to be your own audience first. So, right. Well, that's how you're discerning, right? With your imagining, there's a lot of imagining. Oh, what would they think if I do this? Or what do they think when they hear this? Or how would that come across? Or, yeah. You find out when you get there. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's always fun to try things out, you know, for people. And, Oh yeah. Well, is there anything else in this tuning? Let's see. I did. I think I'm done in this tuning. So Dad Gad is kind of a, a famous one. A Dad yeah. Fat I haven't heard as much about. Do you do Dad Gad as well? No. Fat. Where is that? Huh? What What gave you that? What What made you? Um, go to that tuning. What, what what guitar player turned you on to that? Uh, Jeff Peterson. Oh, yeah, he had a song in uh, in that tuning that I played, and then I kind of realized like, hey, this is a very useful tuning. Like, it's a very there's a very uh, it's a certain logic to it. It's it's very similar to Tarot Patch, except it's sort of down one set of strings, mm. um, all the intervals, and then um, so there's some similarities there but it, it lended itself very well to arranging melodies because of the way the the um, the root and the dominant are on the the five and the one um, in dad fad uh, the a and the d are, are still so do and that's a like it works really well for arranging melodies if that makes sense um because it's very, you can follow the bass movement, one, four, five, still. Um, I think, uh, I tend to think more almost in Roman numerals when I'm playing in open tunings than I do think in um, actual chords. I'm thinking more in a harmonic function, like I'm thinking like a minor three, four, minor four, rather than I'm thinking, you know, F sharp minor seven to right, G right, major right. seven. Right. right. Um, same thing with arranging too. I mean, I guess you can get really creative with it and try to explain it later, you know. But uh, I feel like with composition, it's a little more. Uh, it just due to the nature of it, right? It's your own piece. You can do whatever you want, and so it can be a little more adventurous. And 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 I try to, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll still end up. What I end up doing is I'll just play things um, in an open tuning if I'm exploring a new tuning, and then I'll just maybe improvise for twenty or thirty minutes. And I'll find a bunch of things, and I'll put up a video recorder, and then I'll record that, and then I'll go back and I'll listen to that video recorder, and then I'll say, hey, at 4 minutes, 23 seconds, I love what I did there. And at 14 minutes, 20 seconds, I love what I did there. And at 17 minutes, 
I love what I did there. And then I will take all of those things that I love that I did and practice them and relearn how to do those. And then those can be rearranged and collaged it back into a piece because generally if I'm improvising for 20 minutes, it's over the same groove and the same key in the same harmonic language and soundscape. Yeah. And then that gives me enough material to then build a composition. I feel like you guys could write with that method too because you come upon things um, just playing in the moment yeah actually a lot of like the stuff I've written was through a similar process just playing the same thing over and over again and trying to figure out like what else can I do with this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where else can I go yeah yeah you almost like run it to the edge of it and then like jump off the edge and see and what about this (laughs) <laughs> let's see what happens now I can do it an octave higher oh that didn't work I'll yeah, play yeah, it down yeah. here <laughs> or maybe do it in a different key mm-hmm. you know that I think right. that's like one of the most fun things about composing is just kind of like starting off with a totally blank canvas not all the time you have an idea of where you want to go but you know how it should sound so by like kind of messing around with different chord mm-hmm. progressions um, whatever type of scales and licks you have for melody lines and you know then it slowly starts to come together sometimes it can be you can recompose something in a couple of hours sometimes it takes a couple of months or a couple of years and it's always different each time you know Two three finger, it's that same. Mm-hmm. It's more of like a staccato kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that <laughs> dumb one too? Hey, this, we can start from yeah. any <laughs> thing you want, but I go from middle pointer thumb. Mm. What's nice is by using the thumb intermixed for scales, it helps with string crossing. So when you're going from one string to another, so rather than just going like... That moment is always tricky. So if you start it with... With your thumb, your thumb is already sort of on that other side. And so it makes it really easy for string transitions. They call it string crossings. Um, Yeah. The right hand. Yeah, that's why that pattern tends to 
lend itself. What would be well. a simple exercise to start with that? So like on ukulele, if you started with, um, for like the C, I know this is not, but like a C scale would be middle, thumb, and then, so there's only two on that string, so you only need two. So middle and thumb, and then this next string, there's three, so middle, index, thumb, and then the next string, there's three, so middle, index, thumb. And now that crossing starts with middle index thumb because we're going that way on the strings. Um, so, but then if we're going down, then you start with thumb, thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index, three on the string, and then two on the string. typically and thumb going up or back up. Yeah. Uh, I use starting with thumb. I mean, thumb would be the first note on descending. Yeah, going down, down. Because of its orientation on the hand. And then for ascending, you start with middle or index, but usually middle because of the order. So then... really good on guitar to three so it works really well for that yeah for ascending middle sorry middle index thumb, oh, middle index thumb. but if you only have two on one string then I go right from middle to thumb then on descending thumb middle index gives you a different sound um, compared to say like doing um, right if I'm pushing right um, rest strokes give you a very different da -da 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 kind of sound um, free strokes the short sound compared to the... Yeah, you don't have to be as aggressive. Yeah, player. that's more of a flamenco kind of a... Like... Sound. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I feel like every time you come by, you need like a year's worth of practice to, <laughs> <laughs> to those that really want. So it's Here, I work with this for a while. <laughs>
All right, thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed some of the sounds, some of the tips, some of the um, company that you had with this video, click the like button, make sure you subscribe, share with your friends, um, visit the ukulele site.com for quality and value in guitars and ukuleles. And, um, Go follow Ian. How do they do that, Ian? Uh, Instagram, music, Ian O'Sullivan, or musician O'Sullivan, same thing. Thank you for yeah. giving your time and your Thanks gift. For joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Don't. Uh, or they can, or if they're a Kamehameha student, they could take my class. <laughs> I know, man. It's like yeah. Sign up. Go back in <laughs> yeah. time and do high school again. Poor kids. <laughs> the invitation to come on here is always so. Let us know. Hey, really appreciate it, man. It's, yeah, uh, it's always a blast. Same and here. Honor to share and and hang with such great cats. You're the oh, best. It's always good to have you back, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Aloha. See you guys soon. Damn. <laughs>